the disabled, killing women, killing children, killing pregnant women. The economic impact is already being felt and it will get worse. But you, Your Excellency, HH, I don't know, am I allowed to call you HH? Thank you. <laughs> you are the best man during these challenging times to lead your nation, Zambia, through this. I hope. I hope the people of Zambia will be patient whilst you steer your country and people through this difficult period that is not of Meanwhile, scores of residents in Rufunsa district of Lusaka province have joined the rest of the country in mourning the fourth Republican President Rupia Bwazani Banda, describing him as a man of love and peace. District Patriot Front Party Chairperson Emmanuel Tembo notes that the late president embraced peace to unite the nation. Future Royal Establishment of a Chieftainess Impartials of a Chief Chiefdom member, Bishop John Mambo says Zambians should mourn President Banda as a man of peace and love. Rufunsa District Commissioner Richard Mabena describes the late President as a man of people who encouraged farmers to take farming as a business, while former District Commissioner Judith Chama described him as a man who promoted family values. Republican President Pia Bozan Banda. Rufunsa District Patriotic Frontier Person Emmanuel Tembo described Mr. Banda as a mentor who has inspired a lot of youths in the political arena. As a Rufunsa District Patriotic Friend Party, to mourn our fourth Republican president, Mr. Rupia Bwezani Banda. As young politicians, we learned a lot from our late president. He was a unifying factor and he really played a very big role for us as PF to concede defeat. For this, we shall surely respect him. Bishop John Mambo, who is a member of the Futwe Royal Establishment of the Mumpasha Chiefdom, says the death of Mr. Banda is a loss to the country as he was a man who wanted peace to prevail. Okay, father. In the sense that um, uh, uh, President Banda never kept a, a, a head in the hand. He was truly a president for all Zambia. He, it's very difficult for, for us to describe him. All we can say is that may the good Lord has already received him in his uh, 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 heaven's home. Uh, 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 keep him until we, we meet again. Rufonsa District Commissioner Richard Mabena and former District Commissioner Judith Chama says the late President Rupia Banda was a man who promoted family values and food security for the country. Who happened to be a very good man, jovial, free to mix with anyone, and always was a had his far his smile on the face most of the time. And I do remember him one time when he came to Chongo to six. When I was the chairman for Farmers Union, when we invited him, where he was advising farmers uh, to take farming as a serious business. Uh, Arabi was a very, very passionate with his family. He was very passionate and he valued family values a lot. And each time he went to East Marketeers also say the late President Banda was a man who never wanted to leave anyone behind in development. Reporting in Rufunsa district, I am Msiki Wantende. To come in the news, the body of a Zambian truck driver is currently decomposing in a Mozambican mortuary. You're watching the primetime news. For now, we take our first set of commercials. We'll be right back. Bet your way with Betway. We are delighted to add Lubumba Shingo Matora Network. Welcome aboard Rwandair, Africa's safest airline that will connect you to more than 24 destinations throughout the network. Rwanda. 
one day fly the dream of Africa. As COVID-19 cases keep rising, many business entities are affected and their revenue keeps going down. But together, we can fight COVID-19. Rumpi Enterprises provides you and your organization the safety you require in these hard times of the COVID-19 pandemic by using effective disinfectants procedures such as knockdown and residual disinfecting that helps prevent and get rid of COVID-19. We do knockdown and residual disinfecting procedures for homes, offices, hospitals, churches, and many more. Protect yourself and the people around you and get your business running with our powerful trusted disinfectants. Call Rumpy Enterprises on 0955-767835 or 0955-992230 or come to the third floor, room 3, Tazara House, corner of Dedan Kimati and Independence Avenue. Follow us on Facebook, Rumpy Enterprises Limited. Always remember to observe the COVID-19 guidelines, sanitize, social distancing and staying Rodents have partially eaten the face of a boy's body at government-controlled Mansa General Hospital Mortuary, Luapula Province. This prompted the family of the deceased to refuse to bury the body. The of the deceased Ngosa Muyuya expressed shock at this development. A 20-year-old man of Mansa District who was supposed to be buried yesterday and his body was deposited in Mansa General Hospital Mochari has vowed not to bury their child until they know what led to their son's forehead clean to be removed despite being told that they are rat bites. But I failed to understand how a rat can bite a human being in the mortuary without damaging the things he was wrapped in and also how it managed to untie him among other things. Mother to the deceased had this to say. The father has vowed to take legal actions if he won't be satisfied with the outcome of the post-mortem. We investigated who was in the who was in the other family members explains Number, each of the Mabu Dira Abu Neva Cosway, Abadia Van to Mochaya. Mavica Mumut, Pantu Mumu Vach Ukudian Kuchiputu Chabuni, Okova Ukusan Wemi Tishing Isha Kova to Kutisha, Shachin Fiafin to if 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 Helen Only to return the truck, he is said to have been driving back to Zambia. Danny Silwimba was 
an oncoming Mozambican vehicle in Guru district as he was crossing the road shortly after processing documents at a checkpoint. Truck Drivers Association of Zambia, Richard Chola, has confirmed the incident, saying the association has managed to mobilize funds in order to have the remains of their colleague brought back to Zambia. Efforts to get a comment from Juwa Transport General Manager Zakaria Muhammad were unsuccessful by broadcast time as his phone went unanswered. The body of a Zambian truck driver is currently decomposing in a Mozambican mortuary as his employers, Juba Transport, have abandoned him. However, the truck he is said to have been driving was brought back to Zambia. Danny Silwimba was hit by an oncoming Mozambican vehicle, registration number AEB870MP. The incident took place in Gura District, Manika Province, situated on the western side of Mozambique. Silwimba was hit as he was crossing the road shortly after processing documents at a checkpoint. Truck Drivers Association of Zambia President Richard Chola has confirmed the incident, saying the association has managed to mobilize funds in order to have the remains of their colleague brought back to Zambia. Yeah, we are in the mortuary now. They have already put the body in the casket. Unfortunately, Chola says upon arrival, the remains will immediately be taken to the premises of Juba Transport Limited, where the company must explain why it neglected its employee and only focused on the truck, despite management being availed with all the details. He says in addition to an explanation, the company must pay all expenses and benefits in full, failure to which the body will still remain at the premises of the company. Efforts to get a comment from Juba Transport General Manager Zakaria Muhammad were unsuccessful by broadcast time as his phone went unanswered. The body of Danny Silwimba has been lying in the Mozambican mortuary for almost one week now as the incident took place on 11th March 2022. Virginia Chilongo, Movie TV News, Lusaka. Sad reading that makes it. And Economic Equity Party EEP President Chilufia Tayali Thursday morning joined truck drivers to protest against Juba Transport for leaving one of their dead colleagues in Mozambique. Minister of Mines and Mineral Development Paul Kabuswe has attributed the spot of riots rocking at the Black Mountain to some individuals who are unhappy with the current arrangement of operations at the Copper Ridge dump site. Mr. Kabuswe says some individuals are not happy that the dump site is able to benefit many people and wants the situation to return to the previous scenario where a few individuals benefited. Speaking in an interview after attending Mr. Banda's state funeral in Lusaka, Mr. Kabuso says government is in control and will ensure that no lives are lost at the Black Mountain. We are experiencing a very, very bad scenario here in Siavonga's Kanyerere area. We are about so far close 15 families displaced as a result of strong winds that hit this area around the 0506 hours in the early over 10 houses in Kanyelele compound in Siavonga district had their roofs blown off early Thursday morning following a downpour coupled with a heavy storm Siavonga council chairperson given Kwapu has com who confirmed the development told the media shortly after inspecting the damaged houses that some affected families have no shelters and have been left in the cold but said no injuries were recorded. Mr. Kwapu, however, says government through the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, is making efforts to help the affected families. He assured the affected families that President Hagainde Hijlema will not neglect them because 
because what has befallen them is a disaster. Mr. Kwapu appeals to the residents or to ensure that their houses are habitable to avoid a calamity. One victim, Nchimunya Halenga, a single mother, says her roof was blown off at around 0550 hours before the strong wind during the downpour, downp rather, adding that some of her properties were damaged. She appealed to government for assistance. It's this area around the 0506 hours, in the early hours of today. So otherwise, if you check most of these families here, they are really displaced. So I'm reliably informed that uh, the DC also visited this area, and I believe through his office, we'll be able to engage the DMMU to see to it that uh, the families that have been displaced uh, helped. Uh, we may not know how these rains have started. Uh, most of the families here are in the court, in that uh, there's no way they, they can sleep. So I'm very hopeful that the DC's office is uh, putting everything in place to see to it that the office of the vice president to come to the aid of these people. Otherwise, it's a very sad day for Siavonga. And it's not only these 10 houses that we have seen. If you are to check around, most houses uh, have really been affected. They are weak. If you check even that house over there, that crack that you see there was as a result of the strong winds that we are trying to blow off the, 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 the roof over there. So in trying to do that, those are the cracks that you see. So really, most buildings here, they've been weakened. So otherwise, that would be really my appeal. And also, my appeal to would-be uh, builders of such structures, I think it is important to make sure that we adhere to uh, other technical issues, such as uh, putting the windbreakers, such as fisher board, those which prevent the wind from you know, blowing off the roof. So it's very important in the near future to see to it that we advise our uh, colleagues, our people, to see to it that uh, certain measures are put in place. Otherwise, quite a very sad uh, day for the people of Kanyered, the people of Siavonga. It's quite sad. And I'm very hopeful that the uh, government will be coming to the aid of these people. <laughs> But Bus commuters and drivers have complained of a persistent flooding at Lusaka's Lima Tower bus station during rainy season annually. They have castigated Lusaka City Council for its perennial failure to maintain the drainage system at the facility. Pride Malumbo, a commuter, says flooding is making it difficult for commuters to board buses uh, are usually parked in water. Floods in Lusaka have become an overflow of water that submerge lands that are usually dry and causes human changes to the environment, often increasing its intensity and frequency. This being the case, some concerned citizens of Lima Tower bus station have raised concerns over the continuous floods they face every year whenever it gets to rain in the area. They say the government must put up a lasting solution to stop floods from flowing in bus stations. One of the concerned citizens, who is also a bus conductor, Peter Mwali, has pleaded with the government to put up more drainages in the station. <laughs>
And another citizen, Jofat Kunda, says passengers are failing to board buses inside stations and has told Movie TV News that their authorities should act to stop the situation in order to prevent diseases in the area. <laughs> Every year, but it's easy. What happens with government? It's like some uh, are taking action for it because we must take every year. Every time we can go like a park, we have a papiwa, a papiwa. But since what happens with government? Since the government was just going for it, he can't. So what we want is I am Manzi, Ashtebwanzi, Baone. Mino, the Kulima Tower manager, Chintu Kizeto, says the situation of floods in Lima Tower are due to some blockages that are near city markets. He says only a parallel sewer system can be put up in order for linkage of garbage and floods to stop. He also noted that the only way to succeed is to change and adapt to a permanent solution and their aim as management is to finish the problem permanently and not temporal. To mention that uh, these floods that are all over Kilimata bus station is due to some blockages uh, that are situated somewhere near city market Angela. So that blockage has really caused the, state, the sewer system to an extent that if we try to pull the residue from here, the debt from uh, city market there and Yangyang starts to come before the Limata bus station. So to change and combat this uh, challenge, uh, we suggested that probably we establish a parallel sewer system so that there can be that linkage and smoothing of uh, waste and the uh, floods. Caroline Mwanza reporting for Mobile TV News, Osaka. The Mansa Magistrate Court has set 22nd March 2022 as the date for the commencement of trial in a matter in which 54-year-old UPND Provincial Coordinator for Luapula Province, George Nsonga, is facing one count of deferment. The court has also set 22nd of March 2022 as the date on which it will rule whether to grant bail or not to the accused. Mansa Magistrate Moses Mulenga said the trial date and ruling following application by the accused who earlier pleaded not guilty to the charge of deformment to be given time in which to engage a lawyer of his defense in the matter and also be granted a bail. In his application, Mr. Nsonga told the court that he needed at least two weeks in which to engage a lawyer, seek medical attention for his bleeding ear and bell. However, the state objected to the application for bail, saying if allowed, the accused was likely to interfere with potential witnesses. Senior Public Prosecutor Susan Chilumba said because of the political position that the accused holds, the state has received reports that there has been attempts to interfere with the witnesses so that they failed to testify in this case. Mrs. Chilumba informed the court that the state wants this case to be disposed of as soon as possible so that the victim is integrated with the family and goes back to school. And in his ruling, Magistrate Mulenga said he was, try he was giving rather the accused up to next week Tuesday, March 22, 2022, in which to secure a lawyer as he had the right to legal representation. On the application for bail, the court reserved ruling on the same date, 22nd of March 2022. As regards the third application, the magistrate directed the state to take the accused to the hospital before trial date on March 22nd, 2022. Particulars of the offense are that on the 9th of March, 2022, in Mansa District, Mr. Nsonga willfully and unlawfully had kernel knowledge of, with, of a minor below the age of 16. UPND 
Youth National Chairperson, I beg your pardon, UPND Deputy National Youth Chairperson in charge of administration, Stephen Chikota, and others have failed to take plea in a case they charged with various offences before Mansa Magistrate Court. The matter has since been adjourned to 18th March 2022. This follows an application made on 16th March 2022 for plea. The 10 accused persons were present while one still remains in detention. Mansa Magistrate, Resident Magistrate Sylvia Monina has recused herself from handling the case involving Rona Chitotela and Nixon Chilangwa with five others. This follows an application by defense team to have the presiding magistrate recuse herself from the case in the interest of fair justice because some of the issues that will be raised will be similar to the ones she handled when she chaired the local government tribunal in the same court. And the prosecution team led by state advocate Mwala Mseta had no objection to the application for the magistrate to recuse herself or to refer the matter to the High Court for determination of preliminary issues raised by the defense team. Mansa Principal Resident Magistrate Sylvia Munina has recused herself from handling the case involving Ronald Chitotela, Nixon Chilangwa and five others. This follows an application by the defense team to have the presiding magistrate recuse herself from the case in the interest of fair justice as some of the issues that will be raised in the matter will be similar to the ones she handled when she chaired the local government tribunal in the same court. This is in a matter in which the two former ministers in the Patriot Front PF government and five other accused persons have been charged with arson, malicious damage to property, threatening violence and assault occasioning actual bodily harm on the 12th of August 2021. It is alleged that the two lawmakers, while well acting together with five other accused persons, assaulted four United Party for National Development UPND members and damaged the windscreen of motor vehicle before setting it ablaze on 12th of August 2021 in Pambasha constituency. And when the matter came up for continued hearing of the application, Principal Resident Magistrate Munina, who was sitting in Kawamba Magistrate Court, wrote that she was recusing herself from handling the case, stating that it was not disputable that she chaired the tribunal in which three accused persons in the case at hand were mentioned. Magistrate Munina states that going ahead in adjudicating the matter may be perceived that she was not impartial in her decision since the defense counsel have expressed discomfort about her handling the case. However, the principal resident magistrate has since allocated the case to another resident magistrate and adjourned the matter to 18th of April 2022 for mention. Margaret Chota, Movie TV News in Lusaka. We're still watching the primetime news. We go for our second set of commercials. We still have more stories. Stay tuned. <laughs> The Zambia Statistics Agency will this year conduct the census across the country. The census aims to count people in households, rural and urban, hospitals, military, police and correctional facilities. This numbering will extend to hotels, farms, as well as high-density areas with different families sharing a house and those in transitory locations. Every person in the country matters and should be counted because the census will benefit all from migrants, refugees and street children, homeless people, the young and the old people, as well as persons with disabilities. Everyone counts. This message is brought to you by the Zambia Statistics Agency.
University College is enrolling students for the January-April 2022 intake in the following. School of Education, Bachelor of Education in Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Education in Primary Education, Bachelor of Education in Secondary Education, Bachelor of Education in Special Education, Diploma in Early Childhood Education, Diploma in Primary Education, Diploma in Secondary Education, Diploma in Special Education, Certificate in Early Childhood Education, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Diploma in Public Relations, School of Hotel and Tourism, Diploma in Food and Production, Diploma in Front Office, Diploma in Food and Beverages Management, Diploma in Hospitality and Events Management, and Diploma in Sales and Marketing. For more information, visit us at Regent College along Kwazi Road or the North Mid Campus at plot number 11 Luamba Road, Lusaka, or call us on 0955 78 7114 or 0966 78 7114 or 0977 78 7114. Fairview University College. We aim at excellence. Thank you for staying tuned. We continue with the news. United Party for National Development UPND Net National Chairperson for the Youth Gilbert Leswaniso has advised young entrepreneurs in Mongo District to be innovative in order to sustain their businesses. The Youth Chairman, who is party structures in Mongo District, has advised young entrepreneurs in the district to utilize the history of small and medium enterprise advantage and 24 year old carpenter and tailor musonda mumba has thanked the youth chairman for the support he renders to the youth across the country musonda told mr liswaniso he is pleased that the new dawn government is creating an enabling environment for the young entrepreneurs in the country with the campus. When I read that curriculum at this year, you can even supply the wall or maybe even four to six districts. In terms of much money, I'm a desk. Someone did that. Come and subcontract now for nine in my desk. So come up with the cooperative. For me, I want to encourage you that you can look up with the cooperative. My leaders were on a new one, I'm a new one. But I'm a new one. I'm a new one. And then you have a skill already. Then on a Zaka, I would tell my mother to the Hobomb, Banana Banakai, Papa Sakicho. And so there's opportunity now to need a lot of this. Banana usually, Banana, 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 this is the only opportunity to work with our ministers. So, we can cooperate with our ministers. 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 We can cooperate with our so be creative now and employ other people. I go carpentry, journal and post. So, starting to take what you have to do to the top of the Okay, this is what you want to do to the government. You have 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 to do to the government. Kevin Fluffy ni yetu asanga kutu wa vika mo kutu wa ingisha mo pa nuno pa nuno Fluffy ni kutu ti na fya ti ti kare fufi ni azifu ni kutu yama yote so mungu ndario fiti ti akwani shafu kui kare fufi so ema chali ni sio kwa baadhi yetu asanga mo na na kwa kwa baadhi ni tamu kwa tefin cha na pasho kaili umuntu kwa kwa baadhi yetu pasho kwa filare mo ni fomu nchia if you have a material, you can participate in the fiance. If you have a material, you can participate in the fiance. You can participate in the fiance. You 
In the earlier story of a Zambian truck driver whose body is decomposing in a Mozambican mortuary, Economic and Equity Party leader EEP Chilifiatayali Thursday morning joined the truck drivers to protect again to protest rather against Juba transport for leaving one of their dead colleagues in Mozambique. This is not just about breakfast. It is about it is about the plight. Come here, come, come, come here. You can cross here. So for me, this is not an issue about breakfast alone. This is about the plight of the drivers, the yeah. truck drivers as the and driver drivers. Yeah. Yes. So it yes. is not just about yes. breakfast. Yeah. It is the plight of drivers. This yeah. is what I'm, this is my advocacy. Yeah. Yes. And before we even go back to talk about the breakfast, I want us to uh, to pay our last respect to the driver that died. Okay, the driver that died in Zimbabwe, uh, in in Mozambique, eh? uh, from uh, from Juba Transport. And this is why we have taken off our shirts and put on our head socks. Yeah. Uh, our headbands, we are mourning. Today is a day of mourning. We are mourning one of the drivers that suddenly died in, in, in Mozambique. Yeah. He was bashed by the car, he was driving a truck, a tanker truck. At the border, he was bashed by a moving vehicle. Yeah. Afterwards, I just want to wait for the truck to go. Uh, the, the Juba transport, instead of taking care of uh, the person, first of all, they sent a driver to go and pick the truck. Shame. Leave shame. Me. Shame. 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 This was a human being. He was not a dog that should be left mm -hmm. by the roadside. This is how this driver has been treated. He has been treated like a dog which you have, which is bashed by a vehicle and it is left there. Mm -hmm. The body, some of you have seen the pictures, they Decompose. are very graphic. Yeah, shame, Decomposing shame. body. Shame. Honestly, where is our dignity? Shame. Where is our dignity? This is why we have taken off our shirts because we dress up nicely yeah. and yeah. yet we are not being respected. Why? Yeah. It is Why? unfortunate. Yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 so please, yeah. now the, I'm told the body of a gun is moving towards the Chingola after drivers came together and the, you know put up some resources to help him, to help uh, transport the body into the proper yeah. It yeah. is very sad. Very sad. Now, this depicts the inhuman conditions that the drivers are working under. Yeah. It is the, the, the situation of Danny clearly demonstrates how drivers are... It is a sad story. Conservation farming expert Dr. Oliver Kandela Wulaya stresses the importance of mechanizing smallholder farmers as means of responding to climate change in the agricultural sector. Dr. Bulaya notes that this enhances the practice of farming for business. In a walk-in interview with Naiz, Dr. Bulaya further expresses gratitude to government and other agricultural funding agencies for their support to farmer mechanization activities from agricultural stakeholder organizations. More in the report from Naiz in Mpongwe. Something of great magnitude happens. Climate change, with its negative influence on various sectors of the world economy, has come to stay. Every sector must therefore do its honest part to mitigate against the overall negative effects of climate change. In the agricultural sector, conservation and farming with its various production methods is key and the farm mechanization trajectory is in the mix of solutions which the experts believe must receive emphasis. Dr. Oliver Kandela Bulaya is conservation farming expert. The equipment that our farmers are using to respond, you know, to climate change. Yes, we've seen a lot of innovations in terms of uh, the usage of uh, applicators, you know, such as the 
the the sprayers you know instead of using our traditional uh, 16 liter sprayers and so on we've seen you know solar energized you know um, power pump, uh, pumps for uh, uh, irrigation uh, you know systems you know by small water farmers and uh, even larger farmers we've seen you know the coming in of um, uh, reapers you know um, when our planters you know all these things you know easier the way of doing that you know business so dr blair appreciates the government and other agricultural funders for support in mechanizing smallholder farmers the government has done a lot of support you know to our farmers through you know um uh, you know scaling up uh, programs of conservation agriculture we've seen through the sponsorship of other funders who've done a lot of uh, tremendous work supporting you know various smallholder farmers in terms of supporting them with equipment we've seen also private um, players you know such as uh, you know agrisco coming on board working in conjunction with saro afgreen and other players you know providing you know um uh, support to smallholder farmers who are able to you know get equipment on a, 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 a loan you know a basis so all these are innovations that have come on on, on board you know to ensure that uh, um, equipment is part of uh, you know um uh, uh, support you know to our smallholder farmers if we are to see you know the potentials that lies in the agricultural sector it is hoped that more smallholder farmers will respond to the farm mechanization call in order to enhance the conservation farming trajectory as a response to climate change in the agricultural sector frederick manamujende reporting for nice news in pongwe district copper belt province still to come is some international news for now we take our final break don't go away So here's how to pay using Airtel Money. Ensure your decoder is turned on and tuned to channel 1. Dial star 778 hash, then select the option that says Make Payment. Select Pay TV, then select Movie TV. Enter the 12-digit smart card number, then enter the amount you wish to pay. Enter the Movie TV account number, omitting the dash before the last digit. Then select the amount you wish to pay. For inquiries, call Customer Care on 0764 250055 or 0764 250052 or 0978 732 411 or 0978 732 Now for the rest of the news. In a quest to address the challenges of deforestation and forest degradation in Zambia, the Ministry of Green Economy and Environment will on 22nd and 23rd hold a national forest indaba. Ministry Communication Officer Chibaula Siluamba says the indaba will discuss and share experiences on sustainable charcoal production and encroachment in order to find practical solutions to these challenges. Speaking during a press briefing Thursday morning, Mr. Siluamba says the expected outcomes of the indaba include enhanced regulatory compliance of charcoal production and trade among others. The forest indaba will be held under the theme unsustainable charcoal production and encroachments to facilitate discussions on the issue of deforestation and forest degradation in Zambia, primarily focusing on encroachments, accessions, and disgazette of protected forest areas, PFAs, and unsustainable and, and charcoal production, higher consumption trends, in particular in towns and cities. The specific objectives, therefore, will be to explore and analyze the issues of encroachments of protected forest areas <coughs> and unsustainable charcoal production in detail in order to identify potential approaches to quickly address them. 
The second specific objective would be to discuss and address issues of demands of land in protected forest areas for development vis-a-vis -vis excision and decazet trends in place of forest reservations and decazet. Zambia needs alternatives. We need alternatives that are affordable, that are accessible, and that are acceptable for Zambians. Um, and there's been a long history of charcoal consumption in Zambia. Uh, but I think we're at a point now, and, and I agree with, with the remarks made earlier, that we're at a critical moment now where we need to make a transformative change. And I think we have an opportunity to do that. Britain will deploy its Sky Saber air defense system to Poland along with 100 troops to operate it, the UK Ministry of Defense said on Thursday. The Polish government had requested the anti-air warfare, warfare rather, system, the UK Defense Ministry said on Twitter. British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace said the deployment is to help Poland stand tall against Russian threats as it carries much of the burden of this war. According to the UK Ministry, the addition of the Sky Saber to its arsenal in December 2021 marked a massive leap forward in the UK's armed forces capability to defend itself from fast-track jets, fighters, missiles, and even air-dropped bombs. And for more, we joined DW. <laughs>
Keith Mumba with the main news at 2115 hours on behalf of the entire production crew. We well, thank you so much, One Zambia and One Nation.